it's time for another Home Assistant Hacks video. Today we will be looking at the three components. We will be looking at one integration, the integration that allows you to integrate Home Assistant with Signal, Telegram and WhatsApp. The second one is the chart one that allows you to visually see what is the current tariff and the third one will allow you to at a glance see what's on your today's schedule. We'll start in a couple of seconds. After receiving a feedback on my previous video that people would like to see how the component works before going through the installation steps, here it is. Let's try with this one. So today we are going to look at one component, Hex integration, that allows you to integrate your home assistant with these three messaging services. We have WhatsApp, which is kind of secure. Then we have Telegram, that is a bit more secure. And finally, we have Signal that is also used by the USA White House to send news about the future attacks to some journalists. And that means that whatever service you want to use, you can use either Signal, Telegram or WhatsApp, embed them inside your Home Assistant and then have Home Assistant send notifications to any or all of these platforms. For example, inside Actions, select Notifications, send notification message. Inside Entities, select One, or more entities that you want to send notification to, type in a perfect message and click on perform action. And in just a couple of seconds, you will receive notifications to all the platforms that you have selected. For example, in the WhatsApp, inside Telegram, or if you also are using Signal, you can also send notifications there. While the setup process is not that hard, unfortunately there are some of the steps that you will need to do by hand, and that is to create a couple of accounts, add something to your phone book on the mobile phone, and also do uh, authorization for this CallMeBot service to be able to send notifications from CallMeBot service or from Home Assistant to CallMeBot service to your mobile phones. And then of course you can also add those services or entities to your front-end and send notifications from your Home Assistant UI. If you are liking this component, let's get started with installation. Since this component is still not officially listed inside Hacks, we will need to add it by hand. You can do that by copying the URL and the URL will be down in the video description. Or you can go to GitHub repository, click on a star to say thanks to Daniel, find the Open Hacks repository, click on it, click Open Link after you verify that your instance URL is OK, and you will be presented with a window to confirm that you want to add this as a custom repository. Click on Add, press on Download, download the latest version, which is currently version 0.1.9, download, and this should be it. Since this is integration and not a front-end component, we will need to restart our Home Assistant. Click on Repair, Submit, Finish, and Home Assistant will restart. While Home Assistant is restarting, you have to decide what components or what integrations you want to add. There is option to add Signal, Telegram, and also WhatsApp. For each of them, there is a specific setup process, so let me show you how you can do that. In the GitHub repository, there is a guide, the shorter version of the guide. For each of the components or each of the integrations, WhatsApp, Signal and Telegram, you have short steps what you need to do, and each one of them requires you to click on the link. The link will open CallMeBot website, where there is a specific instruction on how to get your account connected with the CallMeBot, and we will be using that free service. It is free for now, it may stop working one day, but currently it's one of the options on what you can use today inside Home Assistant to integrate with any of these three messaging platforms. So let's start with WhatsApp. Click on the link and it will tell you that you need to do following steps. First, you will need to add this phone number into your phone contacts. You can name it any way you want. I've called it Call Me Bot WhatsApp because we have additional ones for the Telegram and Signal and I wanted to have difference between one and the other. After you have added contact inside your contact book on your phone, you need to send message to that phone number with the text I allow CallMeBot to send me messages. And you should receive reply with the API key and also the URL you can use to send messages to this bot. For the signal, you need to repeat the same process. We once again need to create a new contact. You cannot use the same phone number because there is a difference between the phone number for the signal and the WhatsApp phone number. So once again, go to your phone, create a contact, add this phone number, plus 34644527488, and we will need to send once again the message with the same text we used for WhatsApp, and that one is, I allow CallMeBot to send me messages. 
send a message and in a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes you should receive response with the API key. It says that a new user has been created and we received our API key. Telegram instructions are a bit different. First, we need to set up everything or allow our communication between our Telegram account and Call Me Bot. For that, click on Pencil in your Telegram account, select New Contact, search for Call Me Bot underscore TXT Bot, and just be careful to select the right account. The right account has a yellow background with a square face. Click on it, click Start, and this should be it. Now you should be able to communicate with the bot. We now have all three accounts ready, so let's get back to Home Assistant and continue with the installation. Go to Settings, Integrations, click Add Integration and type WhatsApp for Messenger for WhatsApp Signal on Telegram. Click on it and we can start adding services. For example, first one we will need to add WhatsApp. We will copy the URL we have received. I have copied the phone number from the message I received on the WhatsApp and also I have copied the full URL. You can tick this box to receive the test message. Click on Submit. And also in WhatsApp you should receive a response with a test message. If you click on Device and we have one entity present inside Notifiers, if we click on it, Cogwheel, you can see that I also changed the name from Recipient1 to WhatsyGram underscore WhatsApp and that makes it easier for me to distinguish what service I want to use to send notifications. If you're interested on adding Signal and Telegram, you can click on Add Service. Once again, we will be using CallMeBot URL from the Signal platform. I've copied the URL and this is the response you received when you sent the message to allow message communication with the CallMeBot. Copied it here, gave the name, for example, this can be your name, service name, phone number you're using, etc. etc. I'll click on send a test message and click on submit. On Signal, you should now receive the test message from the system and if we click here, we see that we have WhatsyGram Signal with one notification platform cogwheel notify.whatsigram underscore recipient underscore two. I'll replace this with signal and click on update. And the last one we want to add is telegram. This one is easier. We could go to documentation, copy this URL here, paste it, but you need to replace this my username with your actual username on telegram. Give it a name. If you are experiencing issues with telegram that says that you are not allowed or do not have permission or callbot me doesn't have permission, you can go to documentation and under Telegram click on send a test message, type in your username and the message you want to send and click submit. After that, if it still fails, it will guide you to process on how to authorize your account to access Telegram or better to say to give authorization to call me bot to be able to send messages to you. Go back to Home Assistant, click on send a test message and click on submit. We now have three services, Signal, Telegram and WhatsApp. And now you can use them inside your daily life, inside Home Assistant daily life. You can use them in automations, in scripts, but you can also add them, for example, to your UI. So, for example, you can send direct messages from your Home Assistant UI to whatever platform you want to use. And that's it. We take extra steps to protect our messages. But what about everything else we do online? It's like setting up a smart home with a lot of motion sensors, but leaving our front door wide open. That's where VPN, specifically Surfshark, comes to play. Let me show you how. Every time you browse the web, your data is up for grabs. To your internet provider, advertisers, even hackers who, let's be honest, have nothing better to do. Surfshark VPN encrypts your internet traffic, making sure no one can spy on your browsing habits. Think of it like a firewall for your entire digital life. Except it actually works much better than your smart doorbells, person detection. And public Wi-Fi, that's basically an open invitation for cyber criminals. Without a VPN, it's like having your smart home's access codes to the entire neighborhood. Surfshark makes sure your data stays locked up tighter than your smart lock after a failed passcode attempt. And get this, unlimited devices on just one account. Your phone, laptop, tablet, even your smart fridge, if that's your thing. Plus, Surfshark has a strict no-logs policy, which means they keep zero records of what you do online. Unlike your smart speaker, which definitely remembers every weird thing you ever asked. You want more? Then get alternative ID too. It's like giving your online account a burner phone. Mask your real name and contact information so you can sign up for things without spam, the creepy targeted ads, or 
yeah, your data ending up in some hacker's smart thermostat group chat. So if you like security, privacy and not getting hacked, while your smart vacuum is mysteriously roaming around by itself, you definitely need a Surfshark VPN. And lucky for you, I've got a deal. Click on the link below in the video description or go to Surfshark website and enter the code BeardyThinker or even better, use my link www.surfshark.com slash beardythinker to get extra 4 months of Surfshark for free. Stay safe, stay private and keep the hackers out, just like you are doing it to your smart home. Get your Surfshark VPN today. Next component that we will be looking at today is the today schedule. This component allows you to display on your UI your schedule and it is pulled from your current Home Assistant integrations or the calendars. So no matter how many calendars you have, if you want you can display them in your UI. It can show you today's schedule, all day events, just the time-based events or your future schedule, for example, one, two, three or four days or even more in advance. And yes, of course, there is also tab action that if you want you can click on it and it can go to calendar to show you the full calendar for whatever day you want to see. Let's get started with the installation. This is a front-end component and it doesn't require restart but we do need to clear the cache. But also this component is still not officially part of the hex. That means that we need to copy the URL and the link to GitHub will be as always down in the video description. Inside hex click on three dots, custom repositories, paste the URL, as type select dashboard, click on add, close this and type here today so that we can install the today card. Click on it, Click on download, the latest version at the time of the recording is version 1.1.0, download, it was just released two weeks ago, and click on reload. That's it. We now go to overview, select wherever you want to add the card, click on pencil, plus sign, click on today card. The title can be changed to match whatever you want to use. Advanced will tell you how many days in advance you want to look, for example, three days. Display format for time for me is okay. If you want to show past events or not. If you want to disable to see all day events, I will leave that currently as is. Interactions if you want to add tab behavior. And now we can select entities. Select color for each of the calendars, for example, pink, orange, light gray, purple, and click on save. And depending on your available schedule, items that you have in a calendar or not, you will see your today's schedule. For example, this one is for my trash and this one is pulled from the National Holidays database that we have Ramadan Bayram coming soon. And more or less that's it. The only thing that you need to do now, after you have installed this component, is go back to the GitHub repository, click on star to say thanks to the Jonas, the author of this component. Or you can of course sponsor this project by clicking on the buy me coffee link. Now let's look at the tariff chart. This is a simple chart that you can add to your Home Assistant UI that will allow you to see the current tariff online. It is not using tariffs that are part of Home Assistant. Instead of that, you need to manually provide the tariff information, start, stop, time, and also the rates. But then inside your UI, you will be able to see what are the current tariffs, your low tariffs, high tariffs, or mid tariffs, if you of course have them with your utility company. The installation of the tariff chart is very easy. Since this is a front-end component, we will need to just install it inside Hex, configure it in the UI and that would be it. No Home Assistant restart is required. You can either click on this link to open Hex directly, open link and edit as a custom repository, or of course you can copy the URL, go to the Hex, click on three dots, click on custom repositories, paste the URL, select dashboard as a type of the component and then click add. After that the process is same. I'll click on add here, click on download, download, the latest version is version 1.0.0 and click on reload. This should be it. Inside Home Assistant select where you want to install the card, click on pencil, plus, type in manual for manual card and I will paste the example code from the GitHub repository. This example is great because it shows you how to do card with three tariffs, but here locally we only have two so I will customize this to my liking. First one will be called low tariff and then I will have the high tariff. I will remove the third one. Our goes something like this from midnight to seven, I believe in winter or eight in winter, then from eight till 24. Everything else, that means from eight till 20 hours is high tariff. And of course you can specify the cost. For example, this one is 24 and 31. 
And let's say, for example, that current cost in Croatia for the electricity is 28 and 38. 28 cents for low tariff and 38 for the high tariff. That's it. If you need multiple ones, you can, as I said, use example and add third tariff, for example, low, medium and high. If you have more, you can specify more. If you have less, you can specify less. And the good thing is that there is a slider on screen showing that currently we are in the mid of the high tariff. Based on that, of course, you can visually see if you want to turn on some devices or not. Click on save and this is it. As always, the last thing, after you install the component, what you should do is go to GitHub repository, click on start to say thanks to the author for creating such an awesome hex component. This is it for this new hex video. I must once again say thanks to the Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and if you did like any of the components, for example, the integration for the Signal, WhatsApp or Telegram, today's schedule, or this tariff chart, don't forget to say thanks to the authors by at least clicking on the star, and that way they will know that people are using and liking what they did. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, because it really, really means a lot. And it would be even better if you could leave a comment or two, because, yes, that increases engagement, and YouTube thinks that this video is good and that more people should see it. So, thank you very much. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, as always, you can leave them down in a comment section below. And also, as always, before I end of the video, I want to say thanks to those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you, lovely people, who has watched, shared, liked or left comment on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.